If you've ever been interrupted in a meeting to be told that your numbers don't add up, you'll know how annoying that can be, especially when it's just rounding error that has caused the problem in the first place. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you a very simple technique as to how you can avoid that ever happening again. I'm John, this is Up For Excel. Make sure you subscribe if you want more time-saving techniques and tips for Excel. Right, let's get on with the show. Okay, so imagine that you've got to present some data at a pretty high level and you're just showing how the company sales has moved from last month to this month. And you pulled together a little bit of data that shows that last month your sales were around about 82. You've got three products, X, Y, they've both increased. You've launched a product, Z, but there's one less day in the month, so you're taking account of that as well. And you've tied it up a bit, but to be honest, it looks awful with the amount of decimal points all over the place in the numbers. So of course, the first thing that you're likely to do, I would imagine, is format the numbers so that you can show a different number of decimal places. And there we go, you think. Now, I guarantee there'll be some smart aleck in there that'll say, hold on a second, last month's sales were 82, and then we're going to add 1, 83, add another 9, 92, add another 2, 94, take off 4, that should be 90. Now, the moment somebody does something like that, it's obvious it's a rounding issue. It's always obvious. But the problem is it detracts from what you are trying to present. It just calls into question the credibility of your numbers at a time when you really don't want that to be happening. So the way to get around this is to be rounding your numbers before you even start. Now, to do that, you're going to need the round formula. This is a formula we can use that physically rounds the number that Excel recognises. So a couple of examples here that I've shown. If we want to round 12.15 to one decimal place, we would literally type round open brackets or parentheses 12.15 comma 1 to signify we want one decimal place. If we put comma 0 in there, we round it to no decimal places, which would just give us the number 12. And then we can actually put negative numbers in here as well. And that will round to, you know, tens or hundreds or whatever. So we've got there round 12.15 comma minus 1 that would round to 10 because it's basically saying we want to go one place to the left of the decimal and round. Right, so the, the reason that we get these issues here in Excel is because although this may say one on screen, as soon as you click on it, you can see that it's actually being stored as 0.9. And it will use that in any kind of sum formula or anything like that that uh, you apply to that number. It will not use what is showing on screen. So if we apply the round formula to this number, we can get it Excel to treat it as if it were the number one in any other, in any results of any other formulas. We enter the equal sign, cut round to put in that function there. Open a bracket. Now the number, we will click on the actual cell with the number in it because we're going to be copying and pasting this formula around. And then we don't want any decimal places at all. So we're going to put a zero on there for now. Okay. Now if we just double click on that, yeah, you can see we get a series of identical numbers there. Now, if we apply that one to the top there as well, copy that across to there, you can now see that we're getting a number 90. In other words, Excel is now adding up what we see on screen and giving us the result of what we see on screen. Now, that's all very well, you might say, but we're now showing this month's sales is 90, and we know darn well that actually they're closer to 91. So we don't want to mislead. I think it's best to show a roundings line if you're going to do something like this. And I honestly think it just makes things look more credible when all your numbers add up and anyone can crawl all over them. 
So what we're going to do here simply is we're going to insert another row and I'm going to call this row the name on here roundings. Roundings. Okay. And all I need to do here to get this to match is I need to make that equal the total sales figure and then deduct everything above that's going into my total. Now, if I do that, straight away, you're going to see we've got roundings of one. So if I now highlight that, paint the formats from there to there, I can now hide that column if I like. And we now have a nice little summary table. Everything stacks up. No one's going to be able to pick fault with that. I can go straight onto a PowerPoint slide and your numbers are looking good. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let's hope you find it useful. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.